we're going to be recording. And uh, if you want to share it with someone afterward, you can. We'll have the link available, and you can uh, share it with folks. Um, um, an important piece we wanted to be able to pass this along. So I want to just say thank you to Jane for doing this with us. Jane has been working. Um, quite a bit with uh, strength-based living and uh, working with um, the the strength te uh, strength finder uh, program and and developing um, uh, tools for people to understand their yeah. strengths better and work with them. And so um, she led a workshop here for six weeks last year that many of you participated in, and others of you uh, know her well. Um, through uh, other relationships, but I am glad to have her with us and glad to have you all with us tonight. So Jane, I'll hand it over to you and um, uh, go ahead and get started. Thank you. Thank you for having me here tonight, all of you, and for being here. I'm just so excited to be here and share this wonderful work with everybody. I'd like to start with something just a little unconventional, if you will, since we're not able to greet each other in person. Um, I'd like to just start by having us each greet each other in the little boxes that we're in. So if, if you first go up to the upper right hand corner of your screen and put on the gallery view, just click on that little symbol that says gallery view, <laughs> all the pictures of everybody comes up. Right. And so we're going to do sort of Brady Bunch style. If you want to take your, um, your mm -hmm. microphone off of mute. And I would just ask you to just out loud, even if they can't hear you or see you or know who you are, um, I just ask you to turn to the person on your right, whoever is in the little square to your right, and just maybe wave and say hello, maybe mention them by name. So I'm going to say hello, Mindy. Hi, Mindy. <laughs> And do the same thing. Hello, Eric. Hi, Hi Jane. Nice to see you. Hello, Hello Carly. Mindy. Hello. Hello, Mindy. Hello. 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 Forget the person below you. Hello, Hi. Hello, Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. 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 Nice. Wonderful. I just I can't get started without having a little bit of you know human connection. So I would ask you now to I don't like to say mute yourself. It's not a term that I like to use, but maybe turn your microphones off for just a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, share my screen and put some slides up. So give me just a moment here. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and mute all the lines, but then open yours up because we've got some TVs or something going on. Great, so. perfect. Okay. So, how can, are we good? Can you hear me? Yep. Great. Okay. So can you see the slides as well? Yep. Perfect. So it's Wednesday, middle of the week. It's the end of the day. And we're in this marathon of a pandemic that we're dealing with. Many of us are on overload. I know that sometimes I feel like I'm on overload with all the changes and sacrifices that we're being asked to make. We're staying home. Uh, some of us are with family members all the time. Some of us are with family members none of the time and all sorts of changes are taking place. And yeah, it's still so inspiring to see people stepping up and um, even in the midst of losses and suffering and illness. Um, but this does take a toll on our bodies and our minds. So as I was preparing for this evening, I was thinking the following. Let's use this time to take a time in. So this is kind of the opposite of like a time out. Instead of, you know, putting ourselves in the corner by ourselves um, and being punished, let's take a, this time to really tune into what's important. We're going to tune into ourselves. We're going to tune into each other. 
to build our collective re resilience and strength in trying times. So just to do a little bit of warm up, we were just kind of practicing in the chat for a few minutes. If you could indulge me, um, I know there are a lot of people who are members of the Presbyterian Church of Western Springs, the hosts, wonderful, wonderful hosts of this um, evening. But there are also some friends of members and some friends of mine. So I'd just like to have each of you go ahead and type in the chat um, who you are. You know, let's get to know each other as a member. Are you, I mean, as a group? Are you a member of the church? Are you a friend of a member? Are you a relative of someone? How did you get to be here? So just a word or a phrase, if you could just type that in the chat. So we can all see who's on this call. I'm just gonna open up my chat. Great, so just real quickly, I'm gonna read through. Um, Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Eric, of course, the pastor at Presbyterian Church of Western Springs. Rogers is a member. I'm a friend of Mindy's, says Marianne. Amanda is a friend of a member. Steve, hi. Hi, everyone. Member since childhood. Uh, Loretta is a member. Kay, member and spouse. Kay and Tom. Um, Kim, hi, Kim. Kim's a friend of mine. Welcome, everyone. Laura is a family friend of the Carstens. Becky, a friend of a member. Bambi, a member. Lorraine, a member. Carly, a friend of mine. Hi, welcome. Henrietta, a friend of Mindy's and Mary Ann's. Nice to see you all. Uh, Marsha, a member. Dorothy and Janet members. Hello. Alona, married to a member. Kathy, friend of Jane. Love the heart. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> Cynthia and Scott, members of the church. And who's on the iPad? If you could type in your name, I'd love to know who you are. And welcome to everyone. I just wanted to make sure that um, we all had a chance to kind of get grounded in our group together. One more quick prompt that we'll use in the chat is the following. Um, resilience that we're talking about tonight is is about bouncing back from adversity in helpful ways. So what is one way that you have used to cope with the ups and downs of sheltering in place? What's one way that you're coping right now? Just type that into the chat right now. And thank you, Sue, longtime member of the church. Uh, Mary Ann says meditation, exactly. Steve listens to music. Um, Carolyn is on the iPad. Awesome. Good to know. Thank you, Carolyn. Lorraine does jigsaw puzzles. Oh, I love these. Rogers exercises outside. Laura exercises. Exactly. So there are different ways. Carly, home workouts and walks. A lot of people are out there exercising and boosting up their zest. Kay does noon prayers and Tom walks. Amanda running. Bambi walking. Henrietta listening to my favorite podcast. Ooh, I'd love to know what some of those are. Um, Becky walking, talking with friends and family routinely. Yeah, Marsha getting lots of talks with friends. Kim has lots of things, puzzles, walks, and quiet alone time. Yes, exactly, especially in the midst of chaos with kids and work at, at home. Carolyn walking, cooking art projects. Mindy, gardening and needlework. Midday prayer is listening to audiobooks. Eric, exercising, playing with my kitties. Uh, and Amy, cooking. Yeah, so there are all sorts of different ways that we already have of trying to boost our resilience. And we're going to be speaking about a few more this evening. For the next, let's see, how much time do we have? About 45 minutes. Um, I've selected a few key practices from the field of positive psychology. Positive psychology is the scientific study of human flourishing. And there are, there are a few misconceptions around this. When people hear about positive psychology, they think about sort of happyology and, and being happy and smiling all the time. 
And that's not at all what this is. This is about realism, yes, optimism, but it's the scientific study of positive emotions and strengths and the things that help us to not just survive adversity, but to thrive in our lives. I'm gonna share with you a few practices this evening, and we're gonna actually practice them together. Okay, here we go. Okay, so the first practice we're gonna just dive right in is called the mindful pause. And this is a mindfulness practice that's also strength-based. And this practice was designed to help us let go of everything that came before now, including any worries or anxieties, and just get grounded in our strengths. So let's do this together. Now, if you're feeling a little bit um, sleepy right now, I would suggest that you do not close your eyes. <laughs> this is not supposed to be a relaxation activity, but sometimes this has the effect of doing that. So. You might close your eyes if you're not feeling particularly sleepy, or you might just fix your gaze somewhere in front of you on a spot on the wall or the floor or on your laptop. Ah, so I first invite you to take a position of strength, maybe sitting up nice and tall in your chair, lengthening your spine, pulling up through the crown of your head. Close your eyes if you choose and begin to focus on your breathing. Your in breath, maybe saying to yourself, breathing in on the out breath, breathing out, breathing in. Breathing out. Begin to slow your heart rate and lower your blood pressure. And on your next exhale, think of leaving everything behind that it took to get here this evening. Let it all go. There's nothing you need to do right now. There's nowhere to be, nothing to get. Just leave. Now bring to mind one small challenge that you face. Maybe later this evening, maybe tomorrow. Nothing too big, small challenge. Maybe there's some sort of disagreement in the household or you're not sure how to get everything done tomorrow. What are the priorities? Whatever it is, one small challenge. And next, turn your mind to a strength that might help you face that challenge. It can be any kind of strength, patience, creativity, perspective, loyalty, any strength that will help you face the challenge. Really picture that strength helping you. And now taking one more deep breath in. And on your exhalation, opening your eyes, come back into the room. 
into the space. Bringing your eyes forward. So let's go back to the chat for right now and type in, you don't have to type in um, your challenge unless you would like to. Um, just share whatever you feel comfortable sharing. But I'm interested in knowing about the strength that you chose to help you with the challenge that you're picturing, that you pictured. So what strength came to mind for you? One that came to mind for me is um, tomorrow I have a lot of different things going on. So a lot of different priorities. And um, my top strength is creativity. So I was thinking that it would help me to be creative about my use of time to really sit down and brainstorm how I can manage all these different priorities in a you know, in a creative way. So it's, that's about problem solving for me. Let's go back to the chat and see what's coming in. I see a lot of things coming in here. So Rogers, yes, thank you. Challenge of eating healthy, keeping our physical health up and using creativity around that. Wonderful. Rogers, if you find any, you know, new recipes, let me know. <laughs> if you come up with any new um, fabulous dishes to help with that. Uh, Henrietta, community, friendship, strength. Yes, beautiful. Carly is using her strength of gratitude. Wonderful. Loretta, perspective, to, to say, see a wider view, to get a bigger picture of things, which can be helpful, problem solving sometimes. Do act, um, answering mail. Yeah, organizing and taking action. Just taking a step can help us, and that can be a strength. Fabulous. Steve mentioning being steady. Yeah, maybe some calm in there as well. Bambi is elevating patience. Wonderful, Mary Jo and Ron being organized. We've got a lot of organized people in here too. That's really great. Laura, perseverance. And Amy, perseverance. <laughs> internet connectivity issues with telehealth sessions. Oh my, yes, I can't imagine. Um, but yes, perseverance, so moving forward despite the challenges. Donna, discernment, perseverance for Lorraine and spirituality. Speaking to a large Bible study group, right? Patience for Tom and creativity for Kay. Kathy is talking about collaboration. Look at all these strengths that we have. Dorothy and Janet, focus. Beautiful. So what you've just done is started to name strengths that we already have, right? And developing this language of strength is really important for us. And we're going to be doing that a little bit more uh, later on. So thank you for sharing that with me. Um, this Mindful pause is actually based in research and um, it can also, I just did a guided version of it, but you can also do just a simple two-step process and here it is. Step one is to take eight deep breaths and step two is to then pause and ask which of my strengths can help me right now in whatever's coming next. So a lot of people will use this mindful pause when they're transitioning from one thing to another. For example, when going from home to work or work to school. Um, I like to use it before I have coaching sessions. I did it before this webinar to get me grounded in strength and, um, and uh, mindfulness. And many people just use it throughout the day. It's very simple. You can do it all day long. You can use it yourself and teach it to others. So I encourage you to share this with those in your household to, um, to reduce anxiety and get us grounded in a strength. We're gonna do one more activity, quick activity, and then, um, then I think we'll break for some live chat. Does that sound good? That's a thumbs up.
great. Okay, so here we are, we have the swamp. Now part of being resilient is being able to bounce back in healthful ways, as I mentioned. And, and part of that is to acknowledge um, and work through difficulty, difficult experiences, difficult emotions. Now, we're not going to attempt to do that this evening, to work through difficult experiences. Um, that's really best left to you and people that you trust, and sometimes even with um, the help of a, a professional. But at the same time, I, I don't want to gloss over the magnitude of what's happening in our lives. Right? This is an extraordinary time that we're living in. It's unprecedented. We've never been here before and hopefully never will be here again. But you know that remains to be seen. There's just a dizzying amount of change that's happening. And change is hard, even if it's positive change. Change is hard. Um, so I don't want to uh, dismiss what's happening, um, avoid it. We don't want to try to minimize it. For right now, however, what we'll do is simply name and acknowledge it. So my mentor is uh, named Maria Sirwa, and she works with families of children who have cancer. And she calls this um, activity identifying the swampy parts of life. So what I'd like to do is basically acknowledge right now all of the swampy parts of life that we have. This could be anything from minor annoyances to major losses and suffering of an argument that you had with a spouse or a child. It can be um, the irritation of the TV going all the time. It could be anything that you want to put that feels swampy to you right now. So go ahead and start typing in the chat all of the things, any things that are swampy right now. So for me, I'm starting to get notice that I'm, I'm getting irritated with the television. Um, it's just, I don't know, it's starting to grind on me. Maybe I've been watching too much um, television myself, but that's one of the minor irritants that I have. And then a major one for me would be um, my daughter's wedding was canceled. It was scheduled for May 9th. And so, you know, a major loss is coming up and uh, we have rescheduled it, but uh, it's definitely a loss. It's not the loss of a person. It's not on that same level, but, um, you know, these are some of the sacrifices and changes that we're up against. Let's see what's swampy for you folks. There's a lot of stuff. <laughs> in the swamp. Let me get back to the chat here. Yeah, Marsha, distance from loved ones, limited social act, interaction with friends and co coworkers, aches and pains from lack of exercise. Absolutely. All these things are in the swamp. Being away from my home, wanting to go out. Yes, <laughs> a couple of family members who are in the hospital, non-COVID. Absolutely, credit card compromise, anxiety of the unknown, militant people, isolation, missing friends, judgmental people, missing kids, not seeing family, wanting to swim, visit from parents that couldn't happen, have compassion, for, exactly. So there's a lot that's in the swamp, right? And if we spent more time, we could spend a lot more time here in the swamp, and we often do, right? We're often wading through the swamp during our lives. Um, there it is, right? There's the swamp, and there's more. This does not feel good, right? This is real. This is not how we wish to live our lives, and yet, here we are, we're in the swamp, and, and this is real. In addition to the swamp, there's also a pond, the pond that we have in our lives. And the pond is where all of the uh, positive things in our lives that go on in the same day. So this is the same day. We have the swampy parts of life and we have the pond of life. 
so inside the pond are all of the things that are good about our lives, the things and people that we're grateful for, what's going well, what brings us joy. So go ahead and start typing into the chat what is in the pond right now for you. Anything that you're looking forward to, it can be people, it can be things, it can be nature, anything. So we've got spring colors, yeah, all the green, like in this beautiful picture, I love this picture, it, it just reminds me of spring, springtime. Um, ponds, actually. <laughs> family, nice to be around family, grateful for the blessings, my garden, hugs from kids, phone friends, Zoom midday prayer. Yeah, Eric and my church family, friends, family, nature, reconnecting, Zoom chat, flowers, David's cooking some delicious dinners, how nice, hanging outside, grateful for safety, long walks. Zoom friends, gaining a routine, getting projects done, FaceTime, all these wonderful things that we can put in the garden. Now, it's important to do this because we're naturally more inclined to um, spend time in the swamp. In fact, we, our brains are hardwired to process negative events and emotions more thoroughly. Um, so there are these negative uh, emotions and situations are kind of sticky. They're sticky in the brain. They're processed more thoroughly. They stay with us longer and they have a bigger impact on us. And this is shown in research in neuroscience and in the field of positive psychology. Whereas positive emotions and positive experiences, they're fleeting. They don't last as long. Um, they're not as sticky. They don't stay around with us as long. So we need a lot more of them to kind of offset the negative ones. We need to intentionally cultivate them in order to have some sort of balance in our lives. Because too much, quite honestly, of one or the other can put us into a spiral that's not good for us. Too much positivity, you know, there isn't a level at which we can have sort of too much. It doesn't feel authentic anymore. And too much negativity can cause a downward spiral um, and lead to anxiety and depression and, and serious health conditions. So we want to um, really learn to balance our time in the in the swamp and the pond. And it turns out that we do have a measure of choice in how much time we spend in the swamp and the pond each day. My, Maria, my uh, mentor, Maria, has this beautiful quote. Every day, literally every day, offers a chance for a bit more serenity, a bit more meaning, a bit more joy, and 3% more generosity of spirit. Take a gentle leap into the world of the and, a world in which we acknowledge and face what is difficult and notice, elevate, and leverage the good within us and around us. So by spending some time in this, the pond, this is actually like um, putting deposits into a bank account. It builds our reserves. It builds our value. So that when the inevitable withdrawals are made, the adversity, the difficulty, when, a, when those withdrawals come, we don't overdraw our, our account. We still have a buffer. And this is so important for us in times like this, when things are so difficult. So we're going to spend some more time in the pond in a minute. But what I would like to do right now is um, take the slides down and open up the microphones and see if y'all, whoops, if y'all have anything to say right now, if you have any questions, um, or if anyone would like to share anything, we can go back to the gallery view. Um, who has a comment they would like to add or something they would like to share about a strength that they chose or any of these experiences? Anyone? Uh, bravely stand up. You can either raise your hand or um, type me in the chat. Any questions? 
Great. Then we can just move on. <laughs> Sound good? <laughs> okay. So let me go back to um, slides here. And Eric, if you would want to um, turn off everyone's microphone. <laughs> Mute. I mute everybody. That I just don't like that. Okay, so moving forward, we're gonna get into a little bit on character strengths. Um, so we all have many different types of strengths, right? We have talents, and these are the kinds of things that we do well. We have interests, which is what we like to do, and we have skills, which is what we develop proficiency in. And these can overlap. So I might be talented at golf. I might be passionate about golf and I might be able to develop my skills in golf. But character strengths are different. Character strengths are who we are. It's positive traits that represent who we are when we're at our best. So here they are. These are 24 character strengths like Creativity, uh, perseverance, judgment, honesty, bravery. You can take a peek at all of these. Um, someone in the past has asked, is there any significance um, between the words that are bolder and bigger than the ones that are smaller? No, this is just the, the graphic. <laughs> so they're all, all important. Every human being on the planet has all 24. These are all strengths. Some of them you're familiar with as strengths. Some of them you might be a little bit less familiar with them as strengths. Now, these are part of our positive personality. And they're considered key building blocks to human flourishing. So the reason, these are not strengths that I just sort of from my experience have put together or that are part of a self-help. These are actually scientifically derived. This, they're part of a framework that was um, part of a three-year study where scientists went around the world, across the globe. They, they met with remote tribes of people. They looked at different religions and across time. And they came up with this um, framework of these 24 character strengths that represent what's good and what's right about human beings. So this truly is groundbreaking. This is only within the last um, probably 13, 14 years that this has come about. Um, and one way, and each of us has our own unique profile of these character strengths, one through 24. Um, the top five to seven of your list of character strengths would be considered your signature strength. You may have taken the survey or not. Um, if you haven't, that's fine. But one way to identify your particular um, profile of these character strengths is to take the free survey that's been taken by over 10 million people. And you can take it on my website at strengthsbasedliving.com. It takes about 15 minutes. And at the end of it, it's free. At the end of it, you um, will receive a ranked list of 1 through 24. Now, why are these important? Well, we're going to focus on the top 5 to 7, your signature strengths. These are unique to you. The, the chance of anyone else having your exact profile of strengths is 1 in 600 sextillion which means you are truly, we're each truly unique. There's really nobody else like you. And so for, I would like for you to experience this, not just to have me talk about it, but I want you to experience how important these are. By first choosing one of these strengths that uh, resonates right now as signature for you. Um, so this would be a strength that you feel is, it represents you when, you at, when you're at your best, maybe when you're the most authentic, 
maybe when you're connecting with people, just choose one of these 24. Ready, got one? Yep. And I'd like you take, I'd like to take you on a little bit of a guided tour of your imagination about this strength, if you will. So again, I invite you to um, get comfortable in your chair. You don't have to close your eyes, but you can if you want to. And um, this is about thinking about life without this strength. We don't always appreciate what we have till it's gone. So first, just get comfortable in your chair and, um, and begin to kind of connect with this strength. Maybe repeat the name of it to yourself. Notice how this strength is important to you. Notice how you use it to create excellence, solve problems, or have fun. Maybe it helps you to achieve your goals or connect with someone important. Maybe it simply helps you to feel contented, happy. Next, imagine that you're not allowed to use this strength for the next month. What would that look like and feel like? What would that be like? So if you chose love, there's no caring for other people. There's no hugging or kissing, no connecting. If you chose curiosity, there's no asking questions. There's no internet surfing. There's no exploration or trying new food. The restaurant. You chose judgment. You can't analyze problems. There's nothing logical. No critical thinking. Now think of a word or a phrase that best describes what this experience feels like. And then go ahead and, and put that into the chat. And I would like to hear from somebody. I, if there's a brave volunteer out there, I'd like to hear about somebody's experience of this, of what it feels like to be without the strength and then with it. But first, go ahead and put in the chat, what's a word that you would use to describe this experience? Typically, it's not a picture we wish to paint for ourselves. Yeah, sad, empty, limited, hopeless, unsettling, yeah. Lacking depth, yeah, untrusting, miserable, yep, lost. Yeah, so I, I didn't mean to, I'm not gonna leave you in this space right now. We're not gonna stay here. Um, but I, I just, I, I wanna give you a sense for how truly important these signature strengths are in our lives. Um, let's go ahead and I'm going to take down my slides for a minute. And I would love to hear um, 
somebody share about this experience? Would you, do we have a brave? Bravery is one of the character strengths. I'd love to have a brave volunteer step up so that we can hear about your experiences here. Would someone like to raise their hand? Okay. Jane. Oh, Kathy, awesome. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, so I had done this, the survey a couple of years ago, and I was curious if, if things might be changing because of this unprecedented, so um, uncertain environment that we find ourselves in. So that is a question I have, but um, I come back to gratitude, uh, which is what has, has gotten me through uh, a number of, of challenging things in my life. The most, most significant is losing a child and, and what got me through was feeling to my very core feeling grateful for all the time that abigail my daughter was with us and so that feeling of gratitude has has really propelled me throughout all the difficult times in my life and, and i find that even now I am so grateful that I'm employed, my husband is employed, my daughter is employed, we're all healthy. I'm annoyed, I'm tired of this, but I, but I, choose, to, I choose gratitude um, over, over the negativity. So that's something I would share. Thank you so much for sharing that, for breaking the ice for us. Can I, Kathy, before you turn your, um, your microphone yes. off, so Kathy is one of my best friends from college. So we've known each other many, many, many years. <laughs> and you are one of the most grateful people that I have ever met. It is, it is such a strength that we all see in you, especially with what you've gone through. So I thank you for sharing that. And I wonder, um, what, what was it like for you to imagine life without that? Was that, can you just describe that a little bit? No, and, and if I wasn't looking back with Abigail um, and all the, tr all the hardships that she went through physically in her life, um, if I wasn't able to feel grateful, I would be, I feel like you would fall into despair. And, and it's almost like it, I, I would liken it to quicksand where, I could just see myself um, dissolving and and not being able to to not only cope but but celebrate Abigail and and I can't imagine that I, I can't I really truly can't imagine that um, so I and I feel and I and I just feel sorry for anyone that um can experience you know at some point at some point after a terrible loss the gratitude you know and it, it's certainly may not come right away it might not come for years it might but but at some point to be able to look back and and look at the positive yeah thank you thank you so much so these strengths are so core to who we are and how we operate, as Kathy pointed out, they've helped her to navigate the difficult times and they're also there for us in the positive times. And um, my top strengths do not include gratitude. So if I were to go through the exact same experience, I would have used, or you would have used completely different strengths and, and leaned in on relied on completely different strengths. So these are so unique to us and they're always available, these capacities for us um, in, in virtually every situation that we face. Thank you so much for sharing, Kathy. Is there one other person that would, I'd love to hear from one more person, one more brave volunteer? I know you guys love to chat. I know it's Wednesday evening. 
Jane, I will go if, if no one else is brave. It looks like David might be trying to turn on his mic though. I Rev. Here, I'm gonna unmute you, Rev. Hello, Charlie, Jay. I'll come back to you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hello, Rev. Am I on? You're hello, on. hello. Yeah, well, I took the last word on your list, which was the same one that we just heard about with gratitude. Um, at Christmas time, Catherine uh, said, pick a word for the year, and she made a bracelet uh, and stamped on, I said, thankful. Um, some of you know and others don't, but uh, I had a major heart attack in June and had no clue that it was coming, and uh, I was always uh, presumed to be a very healthy man, and uh, in the middle of the night uh, could easily have died because I had a 100% block of my main artery. And so I uh, have lived the last 10 and a half months with a, an immense sense of gratitude for uh, the people who just moved in on me and at three o'clock in the morning and uh, put stints in by noon and discovered an aneurysm that got repaired the, in July. And so um, to, to live without a sense of gratitude would really, the word I would say would be very empty and, uh, and selfish. But uh, I live with this awareness that I've been gifted with extended life and uh, I'm very grateful. And Ann and I live in a, in a retirement community, and so in this COVID-19 time, we're, we're grateful every day. Uh, they deliver our food at, whenever we ask it. It happens to be six mm -hmm. o'clock, generally, because dinner comes and it's enough for lunch and all of that, and uh, we're well cared for. So we are we're grateful, and I'm, I'm glad it's on the list of uh, character strengths. And uh, I hope to live with that the rest of my life. Mm, thank you so much for sharing that, Rev. And we're all so grateful that you're here with us. And um, no one more than me. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. And you too, Ann. Um, yeah, the, the Rev, you've, you've touched so many lives, and both of you have in this church. And, you know, you you presided over my marriage in, in the Presbyterian Church, which is where I grew up. And so, of course, we have a lot of gratitude that um, you're here as well. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay, wonderful. Any other quick, uh, quick comments or questions before we move on? Carly, did you have something you wanted to add? I did. It's actually, um, you know, it's not adding much to it because it's a third um, gratitude strength being thrown <laughs> in there. So the trifecta of being grateful. Um, but I actually, I live in Chicago with some flight attendants and I'm pretty severely asthmatic. So I um, had to relocate down to Florida with my parents, which I know, you know, I should be much more grateful to have that opportunity to be able to move somewhere so warm and we have a pool and I noticed um, I think it might have been Kathy earlier said she wishes she could go for a swim um, so I'm grateful to have that opportunity and I and I will do that for all of you um, and that you know I think gratitude is is so important and that's what I've been uh, working to bring forward as I readjust to living in my parents home and as they readjust to having a daughter back in the house you know none of this is normal for anyone so I think we all kind of have a little bit of work to do in that as well as uh, some kindness I guess would be my secondary strength in there yeah so thank you for sharing that there's a lot of gratitude in this in this group in terms of signature strengths and I also think that we're so lucky in some ways you know we we still have homes and and, and jobs in many cases and they're all always things to feel grateful for and um, I'm grateful for you for sharing that thank you Thank you very much. Okay, so we've got about, let me just check on the time here. We've got about eight minutes left. So I'm gonna do two more slides and then we'll call it a wrap and um, see if there are any questions at the end. So let me go back to the slide. Okay. Just real quickly, I would like to mention that um, all 24 of these strengths 
are needed. Here's a quote by um, Dr. Ryan Nemec from the VA Institute. Dean, you're, on... not, uh, you're not sharing your video yet. You're oh, sorry. you are right. Okay, just one moment. How's that? Good, thank you. <laughs> um, so in this slide, I, I think this is such an important quote. It just says, the world needs you, all 24 of your best qualities. Character strengths are an imperative right now. They're not a luxury, a trivial thing, or something nice. They are tough-minded, resilience-based, and crucial at times of adversity. So all of us have these character strengths and, you know, we're at a time in our lives where we might or we might not really um, be, have a meaningful awareness of our strengths. Um, about two thirds of us don't of the general population. Um, but regardless, these are um, strengths, these are things that can be really helpful for our kids, for our grandkids. You know, and these free assessments can help um, identify what these character strengths and signature strengths are in each of us and how to go about putting in them into action more often. So while you're sheltering at home, uh, it would be a great activity to take the survey. Um, you can take it at my website uh, if you choose. It's at strengthsbasedliving.com. Um, there's also a survey, a free survey for kids age 10 to 17. So if you have any littler ones in your life, little kids love to think of like superheroes and the character strengths that they have and um, talk about the strengths that they see in their favorite movie characters and books and so on. So it's a fun activity and it helps us to cultivate strength for these times in our lives. We don't have time to do strength spotting today. Um, I'll just mention real quickly, if uh, you're interested in learning more, if you've enjoyed this and wanna go a little bit deeper, there are different ways that um, you can go on a strength journey. Like I mentioned, you can take the free survey. Um, I also offer a coaching session to help debrief your particular strengths after you've taken the survey. Um, I've also published a book, which is a guided character strengths practice for 30 days, it's available on Amazon. And then most importantly, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or would like to find out more about how to introduce strengths to a team or grandchildren or kids or your household. So I'd love to end this evening with uh, one final practice. This is called a loving kindness mindfulness practice. And these are all, by the way, research-based. This one is uh, shown to reduce the focus on ourselves so that we can kind of let go of anxiety and depression. Uh, it boosts our positive emotions over time and um, it helps us to spread kindness, really. Emotion, the virus isn't the only thing that's contagious. Emotions are also contagious. So we can spread kindness, kindness begets kindness by um, practicing this practice. So what I would like to do with this, normally it's repeated um, silently to ourselves. But I think if we could unmute everyone, I would love to fill the room with all of our voices. And we focus, we do this three times through, the first time focusing on ourselves and then someone else and then the wider world. Um, so what I would invite you to do is repeat aloud each line after me. So just repeat each line after me. We'll just get started. May I feel safe and protected. May I feel safe and protected. May I feel, I feel moments of joy and inner peace. 
May I be healthy and connected with others. May I be healthy and connected with others. May I live with ease. May I live with ease. Now the second time through, we're going to focus on a loved one, someone you care about. Um, someone who is either with you now or you wish was with you, someone that you want to send um, good wishes to. It could be a colleague or a relative or a friend. So bring that person to mind and imagine that he or she is with us in this room now and repeat after me. May you feel safe and protected. May you feel safe and protected. May you feel moments of joy and inner peace. May you feel moments of joy and inner peace. May you be healthy and connected with others. May you be healthy and connected with others. May you live with ease. May you live with ease. And now, use your character strength of perspective. To, to think of the bigger picture, stand beyond this person to your family and your neighborhood, and going even bigger to your community and our state, country, and the world. And repeat after me. May we all feel safe and protected. May we all feel safe, safe and protected. May we all feel moments of joy and inner peace. May we all feel moments of joy and inner peace. May we all be healthy and connected with others. May we all be healthy and connected with others. With others. May we all live with ease. Thank you. May we all live with ease. Um, so this is where I'd like to end. It's, it's eight o'clock. If there are any questions, um, we can take some questions quickly. Stop sharing. Put everybody on gallery view. There's one comment in the chat. You're welcome, Jane, Loretta. I want to say a quick thank you, Jane. Um, uh, I think I wanted to show you. I've got your book here, The 30 Days of Character Strengths. I think it's a it's a great tool to look at and to go through that uh, that process. If you haven't done the uh, character um, survey, I think it's also a very helpful thing to do because for me at least the strengths were certainly there that I thought would be there but there were also some surprises and those surprises are the area where I'm most excited about looking more and examining so um, I would encourage people to to do that and to look at that and thank you all for uh, for being here we'll um, we'll stick around for questions to Jane but I know some of you might have to go as it is eight but Thank you all for coming uh, and for being with us. Um, we're so glad to have had you with us for a little bit. And uh, especially those of you who are visiting with us, we encourage you to check out the church uh, on our website, uh, presbws.org. And um, we have worship on Sunday mornings and uh, other activities going on in the week. And um, so we'd be glad to connect with you. So thanks for being here. And thank you, Jane, so very much uh, for guiding this process with us. And folks, feel free to stick around and Jane will be here to answer questions. Thank you, Jane. Thank, thank you, you Jane. everyone. Thank you, Jane. So good thank to you, see you. It's great. Well, I did have a question for Kathy. When, when she mentioned about she had taken the survey and she wondered if things were different if she took it now, under these circumstances. And so I'm curious, um, Kathy, did, how long ago did you take it, first of all? And did you retake it again or no? No, so, I, and that's why I, I just thinking I need to retake it. And I, I think, Jane, well, probably, 
been over a year, I think. Yeah, no, definitely longer than that. Actually longer than that. Um, because I don't think your book was even out yet. So it was a while. It was a couple of years ago. Yeah. So, so what do you the, think? Yeah. So here's the thing. This is a really common question and the strengths can shift around a little bit and especially with life circumstances. So mm -hmm. If you, Kathy, in your case, haven't taken it in a couple of years, I, I actually recommend that if you haven't taken it in the last year to okay. take it again. Um, the strengths can shift around with major life events. Certainly this would impact, you know, would qualify as a life event, but also marriages mm -hmm. and divorces and having children and um, all of life events mm -hmm. can shift the ordering around. Um, typically, you won't see the top going to the bottom and the, the reverse because these are part of our personality, actually. They can be developed, but they're also part of our personality. So they tend not to, you know, move significantly from top to bottom and, and reverse. So great question. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? I had a question. Is anyone else really tired of the phrase uncertain times? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I use trying times, if you'll notice in the, in the, <laughs> in the title Which, of it. Yeah, that's better, I think. <laughs> yeah, I am. I, it's getting hard to describe all of this, but it's true. Well, what phrase? Rogers, I was going to say, I, I want to push back on that a little bit, Rogers, because are you <laughs> tired of the phrase or are you tired with it being uncertain? Because I think it is very uncertain right now. And I don't like that it's uncertain, but I'm not going to run from the phrase. I, what I think has happened is it feels like uh, car dealerships and uh, anyone that's trying to sell me things uh, has latched on to these uncertain times. I got you. Yeah, okay. So like I'm a, a feeling hook. offended by the sales pitch because it's a way to then, okay, here's the latest way in to my wallet. Ah, okay. Yeah. I so would, I, I I just, I'd rather they say it's crazy <laughs> or this is hard as hell or whatever you want to say, <laughs> but be truthful. Yeah. So Rogers, as I recall, you are one of your signature strengths, I think is creativity. Is that true? Yes. Well, to be yeah. honest, I've forgotten. Um, yeah, I, I think it was. I think it is. Yeah. I need, as to, I recall. I need to go and look at the book and realize what they were. <laughs> So I would invite you to come up with a different phrase using your creativity. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Yeah, you get an acronym out of it too. Right. Yeah. I, I, I kind of agree with you that it is, there's a lot of it around. It's, um, it's sometimes used as a marketing hook. Um, sometimes not, but, and Eric, you know, to your point too, it is, it is uncertain. It is trying. It is crazy. and. We don't like, you know, being where we are, <laughs> to say the least. Well, I, I believe, hi, this is Paul. Um, hi, Paul. I, I believe, hi, Jane. Uh, I believe the, the Chinese proverb is, may we live in interesting times. <laughs> and I would hope that it would quickly change from uncertain to back to interesting times. Mm. I like that reframe. Yeah. Mm. Interest, it certainly is interesting. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. What else? Other comments, questions? Love that you're all staying. <laughs> One of the things I was thinking about is how we're all getting through this and we're finding joy, I think, at least I am, in things that I like to do but I hadn't taken time to do for a long time. Like mm -hmm. being out in my garden and rebuilding stone walls and picking back up needlepoint. I haven't done this in a long time, but now I'm forced to be in the house or be isolated. And so on the sunny days, I'm outside. On the less sunny days or days I don't want to get out of my pajamas, I'm inside <laughs> doing needlepoint. And I'm, I'm finding joy in that. Yes, I'm bored and stir crazy. And so when I start thinking about the future, like how will I get together with people again and lose all this time to be within myself? Mm -hmm. 
That's a perfect example of that and that was on that pond slide, you know, the, the being in the swamp and being in the pond and making those choices. I find myself playing piano more often, to your point, which brings me a lot of joy. So it's really about elevating those things that, you know, bring each of us joy um, to help to help us navigate these times and provide that buffer for us. Thank you for sharing that, Mindy. Anything else? Well, it's not a question, but it's a, a comment that um, I am pretty technologically uh, <laughs> challenged. But on Sunday mornings, we're having more fun. Uh, we go to four church services on Sunday mornings. We uh, we go to our church in Naperville and. Uh, then we go to Western Springs. Eric, this last Sunday was particularly marvelous. I felt uh, you and Halda really had a, had a message. And mm -hmm. I think the way you're, you're doing your technology, I just marvel at. Thanks. Then we go down to Champaign where uh, granddaughter Alicia goes to church. Then we go up to Lake Forest where uh, our friend Glenn Roberts is. And then uh, on Monday, we'll go to the Downers Grove UCC Church with <laughs> Catherine. So it's been a fascinating experience. I would never have guessed it, but um, it's, it's fascinating to see. I mean, I'm a preacher, so it's fun to see other preachers dealing with something I don't have to deal with. <laughs> yeah, so this is allowing you to really kind of get around, which is yeah. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, been, we've enjoyed and I thought it. Anne's I thought Ann's message of liking to go to church in her pajamas was priceless. <laughs> <laughs> I may have trouble going back to church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine who would have known that all the things we could have done in our pajamas. <laughs> no, can... I, I will say she did get dressed for this event. Afraid <laughs> <laughs> of the gallery. <laughs> the top half. Yeah. <laughs> the top half. <laughs> Funny. Funny. Oh, what else? Okay. Well, thank you all for being here. I've just so enjoyed being with you and sharing your stories and sharing your, yourselves with me and with each other tonight. And I wish you all well, and I hope to see you again sometime very soon. Maybe I'll see you in church one day yeah. soon. Well, thank you, Jane and Eric, for coordinating. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Jane. Good night. Bye, Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye.